I don't have the scientific background, but my gut health is so far as uh, I've been experimenting, I'm still alive and good. There's there will be many major issues. Um, so I've done like kombucha and uh, water kefir and milk kefir and also because um, I was also cutting down on animal products, also trying out um, coconut milk kefir. Um, yeah, and then at my farm, because uh, when I have a lot of uh, diff three different types of uh, bananas and made, uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, banana trees, and some there will be times where we don't have bananas, but then there will be times when like when it's ready, right? I will have like you know like ten, twelve bunches. I don't mean like a hand, but like the whole you know bunch of bananas, and there's only so much bananas you can. <laughs> so I will freeze them, uh, make them into bread. Um, but I also learned how to make a banana ferment banana. So I was trying to aim for uh, making banana syrup, and that's actually really simple. And uh, it's just like slicing the bananas into maybe about an inch, uh, and then laying them out, and then layering it with uh, sugar. So I was just using like raw sugar. And then after about a week or so, you make sure that it's a little bit ventilated so it doesn't explode. Um, that uh, you can see that the juice start to come out from it. Um, but, but okay, so that's the first part. That's the syrup part. But I also made a banana, banana vinegar. So the next step process is you take out the syrup and then you add water. And when you put the water in, it's actually, um, uh, you want to put, of course, like, ideally like distilled water uh, because where I am in the village we actually have to buy like uh, uh, bottled water for drinking uh, like in big cups and re recycle the, the tubs so so yeah so you will fill it up with water uh, cover basically the, the bananas have to be submerged in water and then you will leave it for a minimum of uh, six months uh, longer if possible and then you will get a banana vinegar. So that, that sounds quite easy, it just takes time. And I have had very, very nice, complex and full flavored banana uh, syrup, but as well as a banana vinegar. So there's the uh, acidity, the tartness in it, and the fragrance, a little bit of the fragrance of the bananas. Uh, but the there's once uh, I uh, accidentally made uh, banana alcohol, whiskey, yeah, banana <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> so because I don't have a scientific background, I really literally just like kind of follow the steps and then kind of like depending on what uh, bananas is available or what I have to like, okay, I can't, I can't make bread anymore. I can't make cakes anymore. My freezer is full. I'm having like banana smoothie every day, which is great. Um, you know, with also other people taking it, but there's still a lot. Um, and uh, because we were working with two different types of banana for the fermentation, uh, for whatever reason, the, the whiskey came about. And um, from my observation, I can only share from that, that my speculation, and I hope that maybe DJ, if he has some scientific background, he can answer my question, uh, that it's, I think it's either the type of the banana or it's uh, the ripeness of the banana. So if the banana is already uh, a little bit more than, like when you eat a banana, it's kind of still firm, right? But if it's a little bit, uh, softer already, not not like going back or anything, but maybe the fermentation is like really, if you leave it for another day, it's going to start to ferment, then um, maybe that's when you will accidentally make a uh, banana whiskey. <laughs> so, so that is my observation so far. That has happened twice. Um, I personally don't drink alcohol anymore, uh, but the whiskey is actually quite good and uh, I know it because last so I kept I kept them uh, some people drink and I would offer it sometimes we did use it for cooking sometimes um, but last year the winter in Chiang Mai was uh, was quite warm 
but uh, for about three days, it was brutally cold. It was like really, really cold, uh, five, six degrees. And I'm staying in the village where there is no air conditioning, meaning there's no heater, there's no way to regulate. The only thing, because the winter season is not very long and it's usually not that cold. So the way that people would uh, manage during the winter season is just having thick blankets. So you will see that in every household, there's a wardrobe that has like, you know, your winter clothing and like thick blankets and you will just use that. So that, uh, but then the, um, when it got really, really cold for about three days, it was uh, really, really painful. We, nobody wanted to do dishes um, because you just don't want to touch water. It's just like burning, you know. Um, so I had the I had the, some banana whiskey and that was delicious and it was helpful. And since I don't really drink uh, alcohol, so that also made me uh, a little bit tipsy quite easily. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's my uh, banana fermentation adventure. <laughs> I'm sure people on this call, uh, if you're interested in this subject, you will also have had some experiment or maybe some experience maybe in ferment fermenting stuff. I've also done a uh, mulberry, mulberry syrup. Yeah, because uh, in uh, February, March, um, my neighbor in the village has a, a very old uh, mulberry trees and they don't uh it's like they they don't really harvest everything it's just really in abundance so you know they they will just eat it uh the kids around will eat it but then there's still a lot that keeps growing so i will go with like my buckets with a few other people and then we will just harvest it and then um to make mulberry syrup and we also have made um home spray Fermentation, this, this would be kind of like an enzyme, plant spray. So you make that and then you will spray, you dilute it for the plants uh, to give it the nutrients. Yeah, so that's, that's a non-food non -food, uh, fermentation that, that we did as well. Yeah. Eileen do kombucha. Yeah, a lot of people do kombucha. Does anybody want to share about your kombucha experience? I know that I go crazy when I started doing it, um, making a lot of different flavors. And Jen, Arlie and Jen. Trayvon, maybe you can tell us what, what you were saying that you saw in the kitchen. What else did you see? You must remind me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... Oh. Yeah, the tofu, especially like your tofu was also different from the one in the market. Yeah, the tofu one was when two years ago, I had a, a couple friends from Taiwan who came to visit and like they were living simple life and they will also learn about fermentation and I'm, you know, like in Taiwan, there's a lot of these uh, knowledge as well. Um, so they brought, uh, they taught me two things. One is they brought this, um, it's like a starter, kind of like a koji starter that is, uh, that you will ferment it, you will add it into your uh, sticky rice, white sticky rice. And to make, uh, what did they call it? It's a, it, it also becomes alcoholic and it is very sweet because of the uh, the carbs from the rice itself. So apparently it's good for women uh, because it's warming. So when you're having your cycle, it's something that you can take uh, and that's, that's supposed to be uh, nourishing for your body. Um, and then the other one that is more fun and interesting is we actually did um, I, IMO fermentation. The IMO. Uh, yeah, it's basically we were capturing wild uh, bacteria from the atmosphere and that is what we were using to make the, we were, we were basically we were creating our own starter culture. So uh, to ferment the tofu, you know, like when you have those type of uh, Chinese uh, fermented tofu that's very, very salty, very flavorful. Yeah. 
So the village where I am, there's also nearby uh, Chinese villages that came from Yunnan during the, the revolution time. Uh, so we could buy them, for, uh, like their homemade ones. Uh, there's also factory made ones. But what my friend taught me to do is that we would cook uh, white rice. And the white rice have to be perfectly cooked, like al dente. So it cannot be too wet. And uh, after it's fully cooked, you have to be li li fen ming. That means you have to be, uh, they, they cannot be sticking to each other. So each grain is still separatable, but they're already fully cooked. So th that, ha that is uh, key. And then again, very village style. Um, so there's a few leaves that we can use to capture these um, uh, wild culture. Uh, we tried with bamboo leaves, but it didn't really work. The other one was uh, pumpkin leaves. Yeah. So we have those in, in the garden, in the farm and around the, the village area. So the bamboo leaves actually work. And what we do is we have like a, kind of like a, you know, like a bamboo tray. And then we put some like a baking paper, I think. And then we put, we spread out the cooked rice. And then uh, we put the leaves on the cooked rice. And then we cover it. And then you actually, we literally um, bundle it up with like those thick blankets that I mentioned. And this is in June, so it's actually quite warm during that time. And uh, we will bundle it up with those thick blankets and we will put it in the, we put it in the living room. It's a wood, wooden house, like a traditional Thai wooden house, Lana wooden house. And it, it just starts to, yeah, it just starts to heat up. And we will check it with just by like kind of peeking into it, putting our hands into it uh, carefully, not touching the rice, but just get a feel of it. And then the first time it didn't work out. And then the second time we did it again, uh, after about three or four days, it was, it was very stable. The temperature was very stable. So we know that like the activity is uh, doing well. And then finally, when uh, we feel that so it's it's a very intuitive process and you really just kind of like connect with the material that you're working with um, and then uh, We open the blanket and the leaves and then you will see that on top of it um, On top of the rice that is spread out, right? So it's not in clumps the rice are spread out into like kind of almost like one layer of rice. There's a little um, uh, White mold on it like furry furry uh, very nice, nice and uh, yeah, nice and cozy looking, cloudy for uh, mold on it. And but there were certain parts that were like a bit uh, darker color. So those were the parts that we took out. So according to my friends who were showing me this process, um, uh, in in Japan they are very they are more. Uh, precise about it so they would only use the ones with the white mold but then in Taiwan the those who are more seasoned they are also daring enough to say okay they can recognize whether this a little bit darker one whether they can use it on so anyway so after that we collected all the the rice that we feel that is safe with the white mold and then we layer it with a uh, tofu that we bought from the market um, put water and then that's where the fermentation process took place and that's another I think I started using the tofu and it was very nice uh, about three to four months after that Yeah, so that's how we were making the The fermented tofu the Chinese style. 